Hello everyone, welcome to this video where I'm going to be going through some of my uh, old Sims 4 houses and show you um, things that I didn't do super great and how you can make better houses and learn from my mistakes. So I did this with The Sims 3 um, about a week ago, so I thought I'd do it for The Sims 4 as well. So this house actually has never been um, on YouTube. Um, most of my Sims 4 houses I've posted to YouTube, but not this one. Um, it's also not finished. But before I get into this house, I do want to mention I have an idea of like maybe... Um, continuing the series beyond just showing houses um, that I've made, but maybe, you know, having you guys submit houses that, you know, you've built on the gallery and I can go through and provide, you know, just some uh, tips for how to improve your houses, not like roasting or anything, um, although I might roast myself, but yeah, I won't, I won't uh, be too harsh, but yeah, so if you want to um, submit a house for me to look at um, for The Sims 4, um, you can tag it or hashtag it on the gallery um, with hashtag ITS home improvement um, like ITS like into the simulation but also it's like it's home improvement so yeah hashtag ITS home improvement so um, yeah I'll, I'll do a video um, uh, in the future when I compile some of the houses that you guys submit and just go over you know how um, they can be improved and just give some tips like that. But we'll, uh, for now, for this video, let's look over um, a few houses that I've made. So this house here has a few things um, with it that I want to go over that I think really could be improved. And the first one I think that's kind of obvious is this diagonal uh, situation here. So you can see that there's something really strange happening with this diagonal part and this roof and these columns. Um, yeah, so what I would do in this instance is not recommend having a diagonal portion of the house that's just flush um, with walls. So you can see over here on the right, this diagonal portion, oh, the camera's having a field day right now. Um, well, anyway, you can see this on the first floor is flush with these two walls. It doesn't, it just goes like that. On the second floor, it's the same situation here, but then here it strangely like bumps out. And this just makes the roof really strange and I have these weird columns. Um, what I would do in this instance is, um, Instead of having the wall go like that, I would bring it, not like that, sorry. Um, I would bring it out, so let's get rid of that excess. I'd bring it out like so. Oh, oh, because there's a round, there's a stupid round piece here. All right, well, you know what? We'll just remove that for right now. Um, oh my gosh, everything is like being crazy. Wait, what is happening? Oh, it doesn't, there we go. Okay, well, this is what I'm trying to demonstrate. So obviously that rounded portion would have to go farther out a little bit so it doesn't interfere. Um, but yeah, like up here as well, I would recommend bringing this out. Let's see if it'll let me, oh, it does, look at that. Um, and then here, this is just like a strange situation. Um, obviously don't, don't put a corner like this in. Let's not do that. Let's just remove this and just build it like the first floor. Uh, of course, the rounded piece again strikes it strikes again. We'll just remove it again. Everything is gonna look a little janky right now, but the main thing I want to point out is the roof. So you can see here now if I remove this roof segment and this stupid window and there's also like all this excess stuff happening that's like really strange. Um, <laughs> so let's see if I can get out this like square here. Can I get this on a diagonal? I don't think so. I think I have to use these pieces. Um, yeah, Sims 4 is kind of a little funky with some of these things but anyway once I kind of get like a roof of some description on here if it's gonna even like let me um, I don't even know like what's happening with this let's see hold on sorry about this let's just drag this out and drag this out and then I'll just uh, chop it off with a wall here um, okay so now that we have like a diagonal portion like this obviously this whole roof is weird too but um, let me get in this roof. Uh, it looks a lot better to have um, any kind of diagonal portion where it comes out a little bit from the house. Of course, this still looks a little strange because of the way that the rest of the roof is. Um, I would obviously push this back. It's very annoying that this house doesn't have like any kind of flooring underneath, but you know, this is just not the best example ever, but um, I mean, this is still not perfect. I probably still wouldn't do it like this even now, but this is like a little bit better than how it was. Um, but let's move on from that. 
Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I guess this balcony is okay, but like one of the main things that was bothering me was this part of the house and the way it like sticks out so far. I mean, of course there used to be um, a roof. Like we can just actually undo it back to how it was so we can kind of get an idea of what was happening. Um, but yeah, there was a roof here, um, which you can see now. Um, and yeah, it just, although like this like skinny portion coming out like this and also being flush with the back, I would probably have, um, either like not had this at all or have made it so it like joined with this so instead of having like these two little skinny things sticking out making like one larger um element of the house that came out i think would have helped um another thing that's not so ideal is just scattering um chimneys around on the roof especially when they don't correlate to a fireplace in any way of course in the sims 4 you can just have fireplaces that are like free um from any kind of chimney but I would still recommend building out a fake chimney just because, you know, houses in real life have chimneys. So having a chimney right there would actually, I think, make the house look better. So, you know, building chimneys like that and getting rid of, you know, these like random fake chimneys on the roof. Um, yes. So let's discuss the floor plan here a little bit. Um, of course, some of the walls are missing. So let's just put those back. Um, yeah, the floor plan here is a little bit quirky, and I think the main issue is, well, there's a couple issues, but one is this kitchen dining room situation, this being like one giant room that's like a really weird shape because of these protrusions. Like I was saying, you know, if like say the wall like came like this and then came out here and was like, you know, it was like this sort of, you know, it wasn't, it was like this sort of thing. It's going to be a little messy to illustrate because there's like all this furniture and stuff here, but you can kind of get what I mean. You can imagine you know, a wall being here and like none of this being here, just kind of crudely removing it, you know, like having something like that could be better. And then, oh, maybe we can have like a dining room, you know, it's like an actual room and have a kitchen that's like an actual room. Of course, you know, we'd have to like probably rework this entrance, but that's not too hard. You know what I mean? Like, oh, even do a diagonal here, that would probably work better. Anyway, you know what I mean? Like having like a little bit more of like distinct areas and this is not a modern house, you know, it doesn't have to have an open floor plan. Um, over here, I'd probably like get rid of this and open this up and then center, you know, the fireplace. And then you have a living room. This is still a bit of an oversized room, honestly. Um, maybe it would make more sense to maybe build a wall here so this room isn't so small because you can see it was a little bit smaller. Um, and I have like an office here. And actually, you could honestly, you know, I mean, I'm just doing this on the fly, but we could have a bathroom like right there or something. This could even be a bedroom with an ensuite, you know. And then this, I don't, I don't know, this could be an office or something. But, you know, just like making the rooms make more sense and seem less arbitrary. Um, on the second floor here, this bedroom is way too large. In fact, I would say just do that you know, make it two bedrooms. You can see even like this, um, this bedroom and this bedroom are both, all these bedrooms are, are large, you know? Um, so there's no reason to have that like one enormous absurd bedroom. So like just paying attention to the scale of your rooms and also like using furniture to scale out rooms. Um, again, here we have a, a fireplace with a window above it. And that's just kind of weird. So you probably should have a chimney there. Um, this is probably a bathroom here. Um, it's not really enough bathrooms on this layout, but again, this house was never finished. Um, this is a really quirky shaped room, but you know, actually it would be less quirky if this was bumped out like I was showing, because then you wouldn't have this like weird inset diagonal, you know, the room would be like a little bit closer to like a square sort of thing. So yeah, but overall, I think that's probably the main changes I'd make to this house. I think that the whole roof would honestly have to be redone. I think this roof is like a little too complicated. Um... And I think that's kind of not helped by the fact that there's all these like little st things sticking out of the house. Because I could, I really think the shape of the house would need to be simplified overall. Um, you can see I already did it over here and over here, maybe like even, um, or honestly like cutting this room down because it is like the house is reliant on this like massive hipped roof. Um, so maybe splitting it up into like a smaller hipped roof here, like an L shape or something, instead of making the house like a giant box. Um, honestly, just getting rid of this room entirely would probably help to, um, make the house look a little bit better, having like an L-shape layout. Then you don't have this massive overpowering roof if the roof is like an L-shaped roof and has like a diagonal portion and that's like mostly it, you know, that would be like a, a better simplification of something like this. Um, cause I think this house is a little bit, um, 
It's a little bit oversized and the roof is a little bit overcomplicated. But yeah, anyway, um, I spent a lot of time on this house. So let's move on to the other one or the next one. Alrighty. So here we are with the second house. Um, and this house actually is the first house ever built in The Sims 4 um, as part of a live stream on the day that the game was released back in 2014. Um, and yeah, so as you can imagine, there are some things about this house that I would go back and change now. Um, one of the first things is just kind of some strange, like mismatched windows. Um, you know, once you like start using windows of a certain style or color, it's probably best to stick with that. In fact, I wonder, do these, hold on, do these windows even come in all white? They don't. Yeah, that's annoying. But you know, it, I would try to like find windows or just use these windows that kind of match. Um, it also, I think that's the only part of the house that has a stucco on it, which is weird. So, you know, if you want to have three elements to like an exterior, um, color scheme, like that's perfectly fine, but you should use them, you know, in more than one place. Like I just put this stucco in this one spot, but nowhere else in the house. So it's kind of strange. Um, and also this roofing here. So this side of the house is really where I have the biggest issues. So there's this weird cutaway here with this like L-shaped balcony, but the roof, the main house roof goes over this, which is not something I would do now. I would instead recommend keeping the main roof of the house. Oh wow, there's like multiple here. Keeping the main roof of the house. Why, why did I put like so many roofs? Keeping the main roof of the house. We can bring this in to, um, you know, the house itself. And then like this whole thing can come back. Oops, let me just bring this back to here. Um, obviously, um, this is a little bit of a mess right here. Well, actually, I should just bring this all the way to like there. There we go. Uh, and then, oh, this is wrong. <laughs> okay, like bringing the roofs, why is there like so many overlapped? Okay, that's fine. Bringing the roofs back to the house, as you can see, this already looks better. And then um, either having no roof over this or putting a secondary roof on top. So like say, um, even if I do bring out another hipped roof, um, which we can bring to cover it, which might not, oops, might not work super well because of the fact this sticks out. So honestly, I might just bring it in. Um, but having a roof like this, which I'm gonna just bring, oops, I keep like clicking off of it all the way across, but then lowering it in. So it's like this, this is basically what I'm talking about. So it's like, it. so it like looks like um, a secondary roof. Let me just bring that in. You know what I mean? So like, this is like not, still not ideal. Um, obviously I'd spend a little bit more time on this if I was actually renovating this house, but that's just like the first tip I would give with this house is, or actually I already gave a tip, but second tip with this house is to keep like the main roofs uh, over the house and not over balconies. Um, and also this is bizarre down here. Um, this like weird little strip that has no purpose. And also I would avoid doing things like these fake balconies that also have no purpose. So, you know, that's kind of the thing. Oh, actually, I just realized I put the stucco here too, as well as there. Still looks kind of strange there, especially with the different windows, but I guess I did use it in a couple places, but that also looks kind of weird because I, I think it would look better being the um, that material. But yeah, I would probably recommend for the house like this maybe sticking to two materials. But the third one, if you did want to use like that there, to use it maybe like on this side of the house too, so it's balanced. Um, but anyway, let's move on the inside here. And the main thing I wanna talk about with this one is the floor plan. So nothing's really wrong with the furnishing in this house. I would just say when it comes to this living room um, and this like bar area and then the kitchen and the dining room, it's kind of a weird flow. Um, I would probably put the fireplace here and get rid of these um, windows and like this, um, you know, whole like bizarre fake balcony and put a chimney there and all that. Um, and then I would get rid of this wall here and I would actually make this the living room. Um, of course, I guess I have to, oh, hello column. Bye bye, see you, see you later, oh, or not, okay. For some reason it's just deciding not to go away. Okay, um, so I don't have move objects on so it's gonna be a little bit of a stickler right now. But, um, you know, like, let's just say, uh, this is just like really rough rearranging just to demonstrate a point. Um, there we go. So the couch can face this way. These chairs could, you know, be over here or something. Um, and then I'd get rid of all of this and I would actually not have this kind of strange bar, but instead have the dining room over here. 
Um, again, all of this is in the way, so we'll just we'll just come through here. Um, there we go. Look at that. So we have a living room and a dining room. Um, even the dining table could go the other way. This bathroom I'd probably push in. I think it's a little bit oversized. Yeah, actually, I think the dining table works better this way because that's kind of the size of the room. Um, uh, walls there. Okay. Right. So um, this is kind of... Oh, hello, plant. Yeah, sorry about how crusty all this is, but you get the basic idea here. So you have like your entrance, you flow into your living room and dining room. Um, you know what actually would work really great here now that I'm just like thinking about it? I know that there's a, there's a circular dining table. I think there's circular dining tables. Yes, like this. Oh my god, it's like perfect. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is kind of a little bit more in-depth than I was planning on going with um, furnishing stuff. Anyway, I'm just like picking random furniture here. A round table works really good there, as a matter of fact. Um, and then at the back of the house here, where we have like this office, you could, well, actually, because there's a back door, you could just make, um, I don't know, like some form of bedroom or something out of the space. And then you don't have this like whack like waste of space here and this floor plan makes more sense you have living room dining room kitchen as opposed to like this zigzag that it had before um upstairs i think that this bedroom is a good size um i know like it's up to personal preference but i feel like a room like this is a little bit too big in fact um as you can probably tell with the way i was making this this is a, a guest bedroom another you know bedroom hallway bathroom master bedroom master bathroom i actually think it would make more sense in the case of this house um, to find a way to split this bedroom in two and to make this the master suite since this bathroom is already right next to this bedroom and to make this a hallway bathroom. Um, the best way of doing that, I'm not entirely sure, judging by how the hallway is like there. I mean, possibly, honestly, you could do this sort of, well, hold on. There's no good reason for, here, hold on, here we go. Um, something like this, I don't know. Um, that's a little quirky, but... You know what I mean, having a, I mean, even this bathroom doesn't need to be three wide, um, so I could probably just like cut back on this room. There we go. This is a little bit of a cleaner look, um, right? But having um, three bedrooms here, a bathroom, and then you have a master suite, and this is a better use of space because then you're getting four bedrooms out of this floor plan instead of just uh, three, and also this bedroom is still really big. You know what I mean? Like all these bedrooms still can fit double beds in them if you wanted them to. You know, um, so it's it's obviously these would probably be kids' rooms and stuff, but there's still like plenty of space. So like this house, like just like I just recommend. I don't know where these windows went. I must have deleted them by accident. But you know, utilizing um, the space you have in your floor plan. Like I created an extra room downstairs that wasn't there before, um, and I added an extra bedroom on the second floor without expanding the house in any way. It was just uh, making the floor plan a little bit more efficient and kind of cutting back on like wasted space. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's about it for this house. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so here we are at the third and final house I'm going to talk about today. Um, and this one you may recognize if you followed my channel for quite a while. Um, this house is from, I think, early 2015. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a speed pill of this house on my channel. Um, so I think the main thing that jumps out to me right away when looking at this house is just how eclectic um, the outside is, so to say. Um, what we have, we have, you know, like a very distinctive style happening here and then a very different distinctive style happening here and here um, and just everywhere. You know, these kind of modern style roofing techniques um, that I'm using on this section of the house and back here really contrast in a strange way with like the log cabin style that I'm doing with like this wood and the windows and then all of that contrasts again with this almost Victorian not necessarily Victorian but like traditional style like turret um, with these mis mismatched windows of like really different colors I mean we have like three different colored windows we have like these white ones with like a medium brown tone these like light brown ones with white inserts and these dark brown ones and there's also more of the light ones over here it's just like a very strange mix like we have vertical siding in gray, horizontal siding in white, and then wood siding here, and then stone. So I think the main lesson to be learned from this house is too many different roofing styles happening at once. It, you know, you should probably just stick to one, not have like this modern roof with this traditional roof together. It's a little strange. Um, not to do 
this many different materials. I would say stick to three main materials. Um, you know, having one that is, you know, um, most dominant, one that's kind of in the middle, and one that's just like an accent. You know, like have that hierarchy of materials. Four, I think, is too much um, in this instance. And also with the windows, like I was saying, the windows, you know, trying to get the windows to match better um, and be like more in sync in their style because this is kind of a weird combo uh, here with this house. Um, so I think that's the lesson to be learned from the outside of this one. Um, looking at the inside, there are a few things I'd change inside as well. So as you can see, I think the size of these rooms is okay. Um, the main thing that's strange is right here. We have like a distinctive living room, kitchen, dining room, you know, it's like a breakfast area here. But then there's this weird area where there's a random fireplace and like a couple chairs in front of it. And then the fireplace backs right up to this uh, kitchen. So either I would um, make a chimney for this fireplace that kind of comes here where these fridges are, or I think better would be to replace this, this TV with um, a fireplace over here. Um, of course, I have to delete all of these items, but it's fine. A fireplace here, remove these windows, you know, get the drill. Um, and uh, have a TV over that and a chimney and all that jazz. And that makes more sense for the fireplace over there. And then, honestly, I mean, I'm just thinking about this kind of on the fly right now as I wasn't planning on rearranging this floor plan, but get rid of this, you know, like, why not? Um, and we can just delete all these random items that are here um, to make way. For some reason, columns don't seem to be deleted as easily. I don't know why, but that's fine. Um, dining room. Look at this right here. We have a dining room um, space that's more open, which I think is fine in this instance. It's open to the kitchen in this way and the living room. There's a nice flow that way. And then this room could be turned into a bonus room or, um, you know, into a study or some something like that. There's also a fireplace in this room as well, which I'd recommend having a chimney for. Um, so yeah, that I think is a pretty easy change to like having a floor plan in this house. So you're like keeping a nice flow um, coming through the home um, from one room to another without having kind of weird limbo spaces um, and kind of maximizing the floor plan. So now I, we gained an extra room here by like utilizing this kind of wasted space. Um, the second floor of this house is fine. There's not really anything in this, you know, floor plan that's strange. Again, a fireplace should probably have a chimney. Um, but yeah, these are good size. This is an example of like good sized rooms. This is probably the biggest, you know, I'd go. That's why it's the master uh, bedroom and the master bathroom. I, th I would say no bigger than that as well. And we have an office here and a couple bedrooms. Um, so yeah, this obviously could be made a bedroom by moving the office down here if you want. Um, so, you know, that frees up another bedroom in the house. But yeah, I mean, this one is a little bit more straightforward. I would just say mostly with this house is the exterior, just kind of craziness, um, you know, would be something to keep an eye on. But um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I only went over three houses with this one, whereas I went over five with my Sims 3 one because I spent a little bit more time with each house in this video. But I hope that this was helpful. Um, you know, it's not really as much as a tutorial, it's more just like a show and tell of like um, houses that I had built before that I would, you know, do differently now. Um, and again, if you want me to make a video um, showing how, how you can make uh, easy improvements to your houses, um, you know, uh, upload your houses to the gallery with the hashtag ITS Home Improvement, um, and I'll make a video um, going over some of your houses and, you know, showing some ways that you can easily improve your houses. Um, so yeah, I hope that this was helpful. Um, make sure to submit your houses on the gallery with the hashtag, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day. If this was helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, and as always, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. But yeah, hope you all have a great day, and I hope to see you next time.